sure that we stem this, uh, um, this uh, very uh, terrible disease. Um, and PHE has actually also been providing support in terms of reagents and also equipment into the system, quality and also safety. So we are glad to be part of this and to make sure that this um, curve is actually flattened. So on behalf of the public at England, I'm saying we are so happy to have you here, sir. And we really love the passion you show visiting our lab. Thank you very much, sir. Before COVID, and as we see now, besides the road the activity inside uh, uh, these premises, it's just amazing the work that is going on. And uh, really just to encourage the team here that um, you're the silent engine behind this uh, response. Uh, all that we do outside depends on uh, what comes out of the lab. And uh, we really, really want to uh, acknowledge your work and uh, appreciate each one of you for the meticulous, dedicated uh, work that you are doing. Uh, Dr. Chikwe always talks about the lab and the effort uh, at the PTS, uh, but to see it here, it's always amazing uh, to see it in action. So we want to thank you so much. And um, at WHO, we are also trying to create a platform where the uh, countries uh, can exchange information at the lab, lab level. Uh, because we see a lot of good practices uh, in the countries. Uh, Nigeria has a lot to share with the other countries, so we hope that platform is going to grow. Uh, we know NCDC is part of it, uh, because what we see here, really other countries can also learn. Uh, so thank you all very much, and indeed a great pleasure to be here once again. The NCDC, we've seen it grow, and we've worked with them both in trenches in all the responses of outbreak of uh, emerging and re-emerging diseases, and will continue to do that even in this current response. May I thank you for the leadership you have provided so far in the overall response across the country. It has really helped in um, uh, achieving some of the goals we've set for ourselves. As uh, USCDC, our pledge is to continue to support uh, NCDC leadership at the entire team and the country as a whole, as we continue to respond to this uh, pandemic but not only in responding, but also making sure that we are investing in the uh, system so that uh, the system investments we are making now will also be available to be leveraged uh, should there be any other emergence of uh, any disease in the future. So again, on behalf of our CDC leadership here in Nigeria, we want to thank you for the leadership you've provided and continue to uh, reassure that uh, as US CDC, we will continue to partner with Nigeria and the good people of the country to respond to outbreaks of diseases. Thank you. Secretary General Services Office, uh, the DG, NCDC, uh, the Director of the National Reference Laboratory, and other directors, our esteemed partners, uh, other staff of the National Reference Laboratory, and uh, uh, gentlemen of the press. Let me first and foremost uh, express how deeply uh, gratifying it is for me to have taken out time to visit the National Reference Laboratory here in Gadua. I've come to Gadua a couple of times, but I've uh, never stretched myself into uh, this part of Gadua to know of the existence of such a facility. And let me start also on this very uh, strong note that I'm truly humbled by the level of commitment and the level of dedication and the level of work that I've seen being exhibited in this facility. Oftentimes you hear people talking about the fact that their samples have been taken and they have not received the results of their samples. Not knowing the enormity of the work that goes into sample collection probably is the easiest one. The processes through which it goes through and it finally arrives here and the very delicate work that is put in place to ensure the processing of those samples. 
the level of dedication that is exhibited in tracking the sample, identifying the sample, documenting the sample, and eventually going the, through the processes of the extraction and eventual testing. And at the end of it, a result is tied to a sample that are coming. It's so much of work that sitting outside and imagining that a sample has been taken in expectation of a very quick response does not do justice to the level of commitment and dedication that is put in place to ensure the accuracy or the efficacy of the result that will finally be uh, given. So on behalf of the President, let me take this opportunity to truly thank those men and women that have committed their time and life to ensure that in our modest attempt at this response, whatever comes out of the laboratory, the National Reference Laboratory here, and by extension, all the other laboratories across the nation that you have helped to activate, that their efforts have been acknowledged and will continue to be acknowledged as instrumental to the modest successes that we are recording in our national response. And like I spoke when we were visiting the different segments of the laboratories, you would think it's just COVID-19 that is taking place here. But uh, for the purposes of my own personal uh, enlightenment, I have got to come to the conclusion that everything about infectious and uh, different forms of of, uh, of, 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 of uh, uh, other uh, pandemics or uh, 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 things that we had to deal with, either virus infections or uh, bacterial infections or malaria infection, all over the years, that there is a component of this national laboratory that deals with that. And like you rightly said, probably one of the duties of what has happened is that at the end of the day, we we'll have a realignment of all these processes that are taking place and we we'll eventually have a final integration of all the work that you are doing for the purposes of dealing with the impending issue and also preparing for the future. Because for me, the experiences of COVID should not go along the path of Ebola and other uh, uh, health, public health issues that we had to deal with. At least let's maximize the experiences of COVID-19 to ensure that our health infrastructure will not remain the same again in terms of structuring the health infrastructure, in terms of provision of adequate response mechanism in place in our 36 states of the federal capital territory. So that if in the future, which eventually it will come, we will be faced with another virus, we will be able to respond in a much better manner. The unfortunate thing about the COVID-19 virus is it's novel. We've never had the experience, but it has demonstrated one thing, that it has exposed the weaknesses in all systems across the world, in terms of health response, in terms of social inclusivity, providing for the vulnerable and the poor, in terms of even our governance structure. I made this comment at the press briefing the other day that a democracy that had existed for over 200 years because of COVID-19 is still being challenged as to who exercises authority in a particular area. That is what COVID-19 has done. It has demonstrated its efficacy. It has demonstrated how virulent it and dangerous it is, that it is challenging even our nuances of democracy as to whether the governor can make a certain declaration where you find state governors 
I mean, a president can make a certain declaration why you find a governor challenging that declaration, and even a mayor of a city saying that you can't go beyond these boundaries. These are democracies that have existed for over two centuries. But COVID-19 has exposed the weaknesses even in our governance structure. Don't even talk about the social inclusivity. It has totally exposed it because most countries are battling with how do we reach the poor and the vulnerable in the face of the pandemic. Don't talk about Africa where we do not have any structure of inclusivity that would have catered for these people. We don't have data in terms of democracy, of terms of where these people stay. So there's so many things that after COVID, post COVID-19, that we cannot continue to run our systems the same way again. If we do that, then uh, posterity will not be fair in its judgment of us. So I want to thank you, uh, Trudy, and uh, all of you, all of you with the staff, with the drivers that are keeping late nights, uh, with the workers, uh, with those that are operating the canteen, with your security men, with the people that are in the laboratories working assiduously uh, on a daily basis to ensure that our national response is quite effective. And I believe that with the network of laboratories that you have set up, not necessarily our laboratories, but you have brought them into a hub. Going forward, I can tell you the attitude of the subnationals will change. Because for those that had a modest preparation and those that are effective, you can see their work out there. For those that have left things in the hands of God and not put in place certain infrastructure, uh, uh, definitely you can also see that. And we've tried as much as possible to uh, help and to give leadership in that by telling them that you need to put up at least a 300 bed isolation center. You need to make sure that the uh, EOCs are effective. You need to make sure that you ramp up your testing. Because if you don't find, you won't see. That's the truth about it. And this is a very, very infectious disease that is spreading like wildfire. You cannot pretend that it does not exist. If it has been able to spread itself from Wuhan in China to over 216 nations of the world, as of today, all the 54 African countries have recorded an index of COVID-19. So I will continue to say it. No part of Nigeria is excluded. Every part of this nation must own up to its responsibilities. And I'm glad that we have come into this second phase where we are ceding the responsibilities to the states. Because the, uh, uh, trans uh, the transmission now is at the community level. And they must take responsibility because those communities are their communities. Those local government risks are within particular states. And you might have seen from the statistics that we had, 20 of the 774 local governments account for 60% of the infections that have been registered thus far. So it means that the responsibilities at the state level must be enhanced and the subnationals will now, with the different levels of leadership in their states, religious leaders, traditional leaders, local government uh, leaderships, must take ownership of the response going forward under the guidance and direction of the presidential task force. Celestina, you spoke about challenges. I, 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 I don't consider this to be challenges. I see them as a motivation for action. The shortages of reagents, I mean, this is a product that the entire world is chasing after. There is bound to be scarcity. There is bound to be inadequate supply because everybody is going after the same product. This is the first time I've seen in my few years of existence that one product is being chased by the entire world. When we had Ebola, it wasn't a pandemic. So not, not every country had to deal with the Ebola issue. There were a few countries that had to deal with the Ebola issue. This one, so far on record, I stand to be corrected, Fiona. There are 216 nations and territories of the world that are chasing after the same product. So I don't see how we can meet the demand, can meet the, I mean the supply can meet the demand. So uh, 
that also begins to tell me that our nation as a nation must begin to look inward and see what we need to do. Other health challenges, public health challenges would come. What do we do, even in terms of cure? Do we look inward to begin to walk towards that? Uh, the balance of testing, I, 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 I quite agree with you. I quite agree with you that uh, when you started, you had probably at the onset of uh, the pandemic, probably you had just basically two, three labs. You ramped it up to five. By the time the tax force came on board, there were five. Today you have 30. Managing 30 as against five is a lot of work. But I'm glad that as a backup here, I can see that you have even put in place a biosafety uh, uh, engineering uh, uh, system that will help you uh, to, to keep tap on the machines and the equipment that you sent out there. Uh, so that the, the culture of maintenance, the culture of making sure that things work properly are done. The state support, like I said, they, 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 they have no choice in this matter. We've ceded the responsibility of the management to them. You could see even in the guidelines we released as to the phased easing up of the lockdown. Substantially, because we want a community buy-in in the response. Because if it is if it does not have community buy-in, it will be resisted by the people. So the non-pharmaceutical interventions that were being put in place is to ensure that the people also acknowledge the fact that they need to put those things in place. Uh, because uh, the, the issue now is not about whether we can enforce it or not. No, 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 you own it. And the choice of whether you want to leave is yours. And there are certain things that we have advised, if you do, you stand on a better pedestal of protecting yourself and your loved ones and your community. Uh, so we'll continue to push those ones. So I see them more as an impetus for us to do more in the areas of our intervention in respect of uh, health, uh, public health challenges. And I can assure you that uh, uh, reading what I'm reading and also looking at the horizon uh, that uh, at the end of this exercise, our country, with the support of our development partners and the very great and tasking work that you are doing here, we would uh, overcome this pandemic uh, with uh, fewer fatalities and less infections, and uh, uh, the new normal will set in. Uh, because gone are the days that we will congregate in our multitudes again. Gone are the days that we will do things in very ostentatious manner again. So that, that will also bring some moderation to our ways of life. And we'll begin to look at the critical aspects of our development and probably invest more in those areas uh, so that uh, uh, our people would uh, get the good things of life, which I have always held that they rightly deserve. Our people re deserve the good things of life, and it is the responsibility of government and the people to collectively work out an arrangement where those good things of life would uh, uh, be given to them. I understand today is the 100th day since the index case of uh, 20, uh, 27th uh, February uh, 2020. And looking at how the figures have risen from one index case in 100 days, we've gone past the, uh, the margin of uh, 11,000. It's remarkable. And that should send a very clear message to our people that COVID-19 is not a joke. It's vicious, and it still remains vicious, it's virulent, it's dangerous, it's infectious. And it has come to ravage our wealth and our health. And we must be very, very committed to tackling it. And that responsibility is on the shoulders of everyone in the, within the territories of this country to own up to that responsibility and ensure that we do everything to remain safe, to stay safe, and uh, uh, trusting that God will help us uh, get to our peak and begin to flatten the curve and uh, 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 reduce 
the, the number of infections and fatalities. And at the end of the day, uh, we trust in that uh, something will happen either by way of vaccine or some local cure or international cure will come our way. But it has come to stay. We must adapt to it and we must do everything to ensure that we remain safe and we remain alive. Therefore, I keep telling people, uh, uh, what, what, what is your, uh, your ambition? What is your plan for 2020? Uh, I will always remind myself in the words of, uh, words of Jack Ma, the Chinese billionaire, when he said, for 2020, as a businessman, don't think about your dreams and your plans. Just think about staying alive. If at the end of the day that's what you have achieved, you would have achieved something. Stay alive. Thank you. The time to come to our lab, I think I can say for sure that everybody in this room is dedicated to this response. Uh, we know there's a hard journey ahead of us, but we also know that we're going to learn from it um, and keep uh, pushing. The, the quite a number of, of fortunately people here have become infected in the line of duty um, at different points. It has also brought to us, brought it closer, closer to us that this is not something distant. Uh, so once that happened, we had to reorganize our own entire work processes, make sure people are safer. And I think since then, we haven't had any further incidents. But we always have to be vigilant and make sure that we ourselves are also careful because uh, the people on the front lines, we can't afford ourselves to go down uh, when the whole country is relying on us. Uh, to keep uh, pushing the response. So, sir, we're very uh, grateful for your visit and for your leadership to the country at this uh, trying time. I'm sure when we look back in a few years, we'll uh, think back to these moments. So, thank you very much. Uh, where Dr. Badaru to uh, say a few that we had, uh, I mean, we have a national reference uh, laboratory here and uh, about uh, 29 other laboratories scattered all over the nation that is part of this response. But I decided I have always wanted to come out here, but because of the nature of uh, uh, the workload, I've not been able to. But I made a commitment yesterday to the DG that today at 11 o'clock I will be set to come and visit to see for myself the tedious processes that men and women go through. Uh, these people have families. Uh, but they spend so much time and energy and dedication and, uh, to, 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 to process the samples. Uh, the collection of the samples is the easiest part of the entire uh, value chain of the, of, of the testing. You get the samples, they are transported here, but they have to go through detailed processes of sorting out, processing it, separating it, testing it, itemizing the samples, identifying who they belong to, labeling it. So I'm beginning to appreciate the volume of work that is done in the laboratory. So basically that's what I, I, I came to see. What's your assessment of the whole laboratory?
there are a lot of uh, difficulties in that. But we use our contacts with our development partners, uh, our international connections to ensure that we do not run short of the reagents. Uh, our, our difficulty now is even to ramp up our testing, so that's why we have expanded the labs. And uh, I know that DJ has spoken about the gene expert machines joining uh, the, 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 the testing processes over, over, over the period of time. The other ones, uh, I consider them basically of uh, uh, integration of the labs all over the nation, this being the hope and the other ones being integrated to it so that in the future our national response will be robust. Bearing in mind that when we started this response, they had about two, three labs. By the time I became the chairman of the PTS, they had ramped it to five. Today we have 30. We are testing in 30 different locations. That's a lot of effort within a period of uh, about three months. That's a lot of effort. And we're going to continue to do that so that we can drive the testing processes down closer to the people. And uh, if in the future, and ultimately, if in the future we have any, uh, any reason for a public health challenge like this, we should be able to deal with it. But we've said it over and over that for the task force, if there's anything we're going to bequest to this nation is that at the end of this pandemic, we should have one standard laboratory in each of the states of the Federation plus the federal capital territory. In addition to that, have an isolation facility with about 30 to 100 beds. If that's all we are able to do, we would have redefined the health infrastructure of our country. Okay, right now. Right now. So you have proposed the need for Nigerians to move on. We have asked our researchers and our scientists if they have got anything that is worthy of processes and accreditation, they should run it through. The central bank has even created a stimulus package for researchers in search of cure of COVID-19 and other public health challenges. So we have a lot to offer. We have a lot of offer. Ours is policy formulation. The drive will be left with the MDAs that are charged with that responsibility. We already have the Minister of Health with three office agencies that are dealing with that. Uh, the uh, medical health laboratory, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, pharmaceutical uh, uh, nursery, in, uh, in, uh, where do you call that Naima. place? Uh, yes, uh, Naima, Naipri, and NABDAT. These are three agencies of government that have the responsibility of validating the processes. You, as a researcher, as a scientist, once you think you have developed something, that is worthy of validation, subject it. Because medical science is a different ball game. There must be a process of validation because the product will be administered of people. And you do not want to have the same situation we had with polio in Canada, you remember some years ago, when we, we, we had, we had, as a nation, we had to go into out of court settlement where hundreds of millions of dollars were paid because a vaccine that had not been validated was being tried on people without even their consent. And adverse effects of the, 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 the vaccine began to show itself. So that's why we're insisting on validation. So that whatever we get, even if it's homegrown, it would have been tested through preclinical trials and clinical trials. And eventually, if it's certified, fit for human consumption by NAPDAT, then we would allow it to go into the market. Thank you. Developed capacities, obviously, you see uh, you know, we have about 150 diligent Nigerians working here every day. This lab runs 24 hours, uh, seven days a week, doing the hard work, collecting samples, doing the testing, providing results. So the capacity is growing. We need to grow the capacity because the number of samples coming in for COVID-19 is increasing. But ultimately, this will serve as a, uh, a resource for the country that will ensure its health security way into the future. So how soon are we going to The gene expert machines are already in country. The reagents have come in. Over the past two weeks, uh, over the past week, we have been training, validating the kits. Uh, what will happen in the next week from uh, the actual rollout date is June 14th, the day of testing will start. What we're doing now is distributing the uh, reagents to the labs that will start. Make sure that they are ready. Uh, so there's a careful plan, and then testing will start with the gene expert on June 14th. Yeah. And how, how effective uh, will it be in terms of uh, no 
So you see, we have an elaborate testing strategy, including the gene expert machines from TB, the COBAT machines from HIV, and our own real-time PCR kit. So all of this will contribute to increasing both access and turnaround times to test. Well, so, let me. Yeah, so what it would do is bring the testing closer. And the closer the tests are to where you are, the quicker the turnaround time uh, it will be. So let's take one uh, question. Yes, please. Please, please, uh, what is the major progress that you have made this response So today is 100 days since the first test. By the time we did the first test uh, in Nigeria, we could only do it in a single lab. We had one lab, and then we had two, and then five, and we kept increasing. Now we have 30 labs. So um, the biggest success so far is increasing uh, our laboratory capacity because the lab capacity is the access point into the response. You can't really define where you're going if you can't test people. What I want and my vision is for the whole issue of lab testing to be non a non-issue so that this response can happen and people will not be t thinking about whether they're testing or not because that will happen in the background supporting the response across the country. Thank you. Thank you.